my name is Misha Sharif and you're watching Decoding Careers, where I talk to professionals about their careers. Today, we have Zainab Zia, who works as a psychiatrist for Green Nose Hospital. Now, here's some information about psychiatry. On average, the salary for a psychiatrist ranges from almost $59,000 to $250,000. Almost all psychiatrists need a doctoral degree and certification by the American Board of Psychiatry and Neurology. But in general, it'll probably take about 10 plus years of schooling. So how are you? I'm good, thank you for asking. How are you? I'm great. You know, as I was growing up, I heard a lot about psychology and psychiatry. It's been something that has been talked a lot about during school and as a freshman in high school. Psychology is one of the classes that is definitely on my list of classes I'm going to be taking in the future. And it is super interesting to me how the brain works and when you get to talk to people you can talk to them and get a deep understanding of who they are and what how their brain works i think that is honestly very very interesting but in your words what are three words that best describe your profession so i would say that the three words that describe uh, my profession best are compassionate caring and healing Okay, that's definitely, could you tell me why? Well, you need to be compassionate and caring to, to help people uh, through their difficult times. Mm -hmm. um, and it should lead to healing for them. That's great. And I, I always think that when people say, oh, going to a psychologist or a psychiatrist is bad, I always think that's obviously very incorrect because they're just like going to the doctor. You go to the doctor for yourself, for your physical. And it's just like it's just like that when you go to a psychiatrist or a psychologist because you're going for healing, basically. Could you describe to me, I know we talked about this a little bit earlier, but what educational background is best for being a psychiatrist? So for being a psychiatrist, uh, you have to graduate from college. Uh, preferably with some kind of science degree, pre-med, then you have to go through four years of medical school. And after finishing that, you have to uh, go through residency training, which for psychiatry is four years. That is very long, definitely. And obviously anybody who has done that much schooling, you have my respect. That is definitely a very long time. And Obviously the entire time you are learning and you are attending more information and learning for that stretch is very um, impressive. I would, I think it is really cool that you have put in the time and that you have put in the effort so that you could go and help people. And a lot of people really think that psychology or psychiatry, more of being like a psychiatrist is just, you talk to people every day and you just assess them, maybe you prescribe them something, but I think there's definitely more to it. So could you please describe to me a typical day in your job? So a typical day uh, at the job uh, obviously depends on like whether you work in a hospital setting or a clinic setting, but basically in each setting, what you would be doing is talking to people, making an assessment, trying to figure out a diagnosis, um, it could be some workup, like lab work is done to make sure there's no medical issues going on. And then you make a treatment plan for the patient. Um, and then you coordinate care for the patient with other providers like uh, therapists, social workers, nurses, um, and sometimes their families need to be involved. Um, and then you follow up and see how the treatment plan is working for the patient and make adjustments. Okay, so it isn't just uh, talking to somebody and, and giving them like, oh, here's some medication. It's definitely, there's definitely a lot more to it, right? And lab work, I never thought that psychiatry had an aspect of lab work. That is so interesting, very cool. And as I was listening, I heard that you had to talk to a lot of people. So there is definitely a huge element of communication. What do you think are the three most important skills that are needed for your job? Yes, so just like you said, communication skills are very important for the job. Um, so being a good listener, 
because the biggest part of communication is listening. And then uh, again, being empathic, you know, uh, understanding where the patient is coming from, uh, being able to support them in the crisis situation. And that would need to be very strong emotionally because a lot of times these people are going through a very difficult time. Oh yeah, and empathetic, I feel like is really a big thing because you can't just be sympathetic. You have to be empathetic. You have to like be willing to help them up and feel for them. And that is definitely a huge thing. And also a lot of people do say that psychiatry, like, oh, you talk to a bunch of crazy people. I don't believe that. I think that everybody is definitely unique in their own way. And I know there can be hardships a lot, especially when you were talking about, you have to be very emotionally strong. So can you tell me some of the challenges that come with your profession? Yes, so um, so there's a lot of challenges. And one thing you mentioned earlier, I think is a big challenge is the stigma associated. So you're in a field where, you know, people are not coming for help. They are delaying to come to help until they are ending up in a crisis situation. And then you have to do a lot of work to, to get through to them and have them come out and overcome the stigma that's associated with getting help for psychiatry. Oh yeah, definitely. I feel like stigma for anything does push back the amount of help you can do. And it seems to me as somebody who, who is not a psychologist or a psychiatrist or is not a doctor, as somebody who's learning about these things, it seems to me that, well, in the public eye, it looks like I'm pretty sure as because you are a psychiatrist, there's plenty of work to do. But Because of that huge amount of work, how do you balance your personal life with your work life? That's a very good question. So it is challenging, I think, in any profession. Um, I think it's especially challenging for women because we have different roles. Um, We have families, we have kids. Um, So you have to make sure you set your priorities and you have to make sure that you take out time for self-care and uh, time for your family. Um, it, it is like a delicate balance, how much you wanna work, how much you wanna spend time with your family. Uh, unless you take care of yourself, you cannot really take care of other people. So you have to make sure that you do a good job in setting some time aside for yourself. Definitely, I feel like you're, you are the most important person. Once you take care of yourself, you can move on to taking care of other people. And there, it is a very duck and balance. I feel like anything can tip the scale. Sometimes you can be paying attention more to your work life or more to your um, personal life. For me, it kind of, I'm not, I don't work, but I am a student. So there is definitely a balance for me. And hearing from professional people who have done this for 20 plus years, listening to them it inspires me and it makes me more motivated to try to focus more on myself and try to have a balance so that when I do start working I will be able to keep that balance and this is probably the most important question out of all of them so to the viewers if you are not paying attention please go ahead and pay attention this is the most important question what advice would you give to a high schooler who is trying to pursue this career Okay, so so I will advise to uh, anybody pursuing this career that be ready to uh, face the challenge of long, hardworking road uh, and a lifelong learning career. Uh, be ready for challenges, but also uh, look forward to the extreme rewards that come with helping someone achieve their goal and improve their quality of life. Okay, thank you so much for all your help, all your input. I will, this is definitely a very interesting career and the studies that go into it, they're definitely used to make the world a better place. And I am very happy that I was able to interview you. Thank you everybody. This is Zainab Zia. She is a psychiatrist. Thank you so much.